Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about constructors in PHP. A constructor is basically just a special uh, function that we can put inside of a class, which is going to get called when we create an object of that class. And we can actually use these constructors to do a bunch of cool stuff. And in this tutorial, I'm going to just give you an introduction into constructors, and then we're actually going to be able to use constructors to give our objects some default information. So it'll make it a lot easier for us to create objects in PHP. Now, if you're following along with this course, in the last tutorial, I talked to you guys about classes and objects. And we created this book class over here. And we basically said that the book is gonna have a title, an author, and a number of pages. And then down here, we created two book objects. So we have book one, and the title was Harry Potter, and this was like JK Rowling, 400 pages. And then we created another book object down here, and it was a Lord of the Rings book, and the author was Tolkien, and it had 700 pages. So we created our two book objects, and we created our book class, and everything went pretty well. So I wanna show you guys another thing we can do inside of this class, which is use something called a constructor. And a constructor, like I said, it's basically a function that's gonna get called whenever we create an object of the class. So down here, I'm gonna create a constructor and we'll kind of see what they do. So basically all we wanna do is just say function and I'm gonna type two underscores just like that. So one, two underscores and then construct just like that. And it needs to be named construct. If you don't name it exactly like that, then this isn't gonna work. So then over here, we're gonna make an open and close uh, curly bracket. So, so far, this is just a normal function, right? It, it, it looks exactly like any other functions that we've used throughout this course. Um, and what I wanna show you guys is that whenever we create a new book object, like we did down here, this function gets executed. So I'm gonna go ahead and just type out echo and I'll just say new book created. And so now actually I'm gonna type a break here too, just so we can see this a little bit better. So now when I go over here and I run this program on the browser, you'll see we're printing out new book created two times. And actually what's happening is we create these two books. So down here I say new book and I also say new book down here. And whenever we say this, like I said, this constructor function gets executed. So then over here, the first time we create the book, it says this and then we create another book and it prints this out. I wanna illustrate this a little bit further just to really kind of like instill what's going on. So this works just like any normal function. So just like any other function, I could pass it some information. So I could say like this function is gonna take a parameter called name. And then let's say down here, I just wanna print out the name that gets passed in. So what I could do now down here when I create these new books, I could pass in a name. So I could pass in like Mike and I could pass in Tom. And I'll show you guys, when we run this program now, it's gonna print out Mike and then it's gonna print out Tom because those are the two values that are getting passed into the constructor. So we're printing out Mike and then we're printing out Tom, just like that. So hopefully you guys see the relationship now. Whenever I say new book down here, when I say this, it's actually calling that constructor function. So that is extremely important and this is actually really useful. So we can use this to do all sorts of stuff in our classes. Um, I just wanna point one thing out. So down here when we created these books, right? I created book one and I created book two, but you'll notice how many lines of code it took us to do this. So just to create one book up here, it took me four full lines of code, right? I had to actually like create the object and then I gave a value to the title, gave a value to the author and gave a value to the pages. Right, so I had to individually say like book one title is equal to Harry Potter, book one author is equal to JK Rowling. Like it was a lot of work for me to create this book object and I had to do it twice. This was only creating two books. Imagine if we had to create like 20 or 30 of these different books in our program. The amount of lines of code it would take would be ridiculous. Like this alone is taking up eight lines of code. So I wanna show you guys how we can use that constructor function that we just looked at in order to make it a lot easier for us to create these objects. So remember, we can pass information into this constructor, right? I specified that this would take some parameters and then we passed parameters in it down here and everything worked. What we can actually do is we can pass in the book's title, the book's author, and the number of pages of the book 
into this constructor function. And then inside this constructor function, we can give those values to the title, the author, and the pages. So essentially we can do everything we did down here, but inside of this constructor. So let me show you guys how that works. Over here in the constructor, I'm gonna specify that I want to take in three parameters. I'm gonna take in the first parameter, I'm just gonna call it a title. And the second parameter, I'm gonna call it a author. And the third parameter, I'm gonna call it a pages. And you'll notice I'm putting this little lowercase a in front of title, author, and pages. You don't have to do that. I'm just doing that because it's gonna be easier for us to see what's going on if these have, um, if these are named like this, but you'll see in a second, we can name those whatever we want. So now that we specify that this needs to take some parameters, what we can actually do is we can take the values that the user passes in and we can assign them to the values for the object. So I can basically do exactly what I did down here, but just up here in this constructor. So what I wanna do is I wanna say dollar sign this. And this is actually a keyword in PHP and it's gonna to refer to the current object. And I'll kind of explain this a little bit more in a second, but I'm gonna say this title is equal to a title. So I'm setting the title of the current object equal to the value that got passed in. And I'm gonna do this for all of these. So I'll just say this author is equal to a author. And then finally we'll say this pages is equal to a pages. All right, so we basically said this title is equal to the title that got passed in, this author is equal to the author that got passed in, and this pages is equal to the pages that got passed in. Now, I want you guys to notice some similarities. I'm saying this arrow title, and then down here I'm saying book one arrow title. And actually, these are doing the same thing. So when I use this keyword, it's basically just referring to the current object that's getting created, right? So down here, I create the object, and then I manually give it a title, an author, and a number of pages. Over here, when the object gets created and this construct function gets called, I'm doing the same thing, but I'm just doing it over here. And I can use this keyword in order to do the same thing that I did down here. So instead of saying book one, I just say this. And like I said, this keyword is just a keyword that we can use inside of this constructor function, which essentially just means that it's the title of the object that's getting created. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so what I can do now is whenever I create a new book, I can pass in all of this information. So I can pass in like, Harry Potter, and I can pass in the author Rowling, and I can pass in the pages like 400. And now I can get rid of all of this because we're doing all that stuff inside of the constructor. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for Lord of the Rings real quick. All right, so I put all of this stuff in there for Lord of the Rings, and again, I'm gonna get rid of this. So now, instead of it taking eight lines of code for us to create these objects, it only takes two lines of code and I'm calling this constructor and I'm passing in the title that I wanna to give to the object, the author that I wanna to give to the object, and the number of pages I wanna to give to the object. And then up here in the constructor, we're assigning the value of title to the title that got passed in, the value of author to the author that got passed in, et cetera. So basically now we did exactly what we did before, but we just saved ourselves a bunch of time and a bunch of code. All right, so I'm gonna prove this to you guys. I'm gonna come down here and why don't we just echo out like book one title. So we're gonna echo out the title of book one and we should get Harry Potter, so we do. So this is working exactly like it worked before. It's just way easier for us to create these um, objects. And the thing that's cool about this is I could still modify these values. So if I wanted to come over here, I could still say like book one title is equal to, and I could give this a different value. So we can make this like Hunger Games or something. And now the book one's title is gonna be updated. So instead of being Harry Potter, it's gonna be Hunger Games. The whole point of using this constructor is that we can give this information right up front. So I don't have to manually set it, I can just do it right away and the object has some initial information. So that is how constructors can be used and constructors are extremely useful. A lot of times when people create classes, they'll create constructors for those classes. 
Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.